Ladies and gentlemen, the 15th annual event that is Gamescom has recently ended. Gamescom, in case you are not aware, is the largest interactive entertainment event in the world. It is hosted in Germany and every year hundreds of thousands of people attend this event. This includes large and small developers alike. They host panels and of course a myriad of gaming showcases so players can get their hands on upcoming games before they release. This year's Gamescom event hosted around 300,000 plus people. In this video, I'm going to showcase some of the games that got me excited and what I'm looking forward to as well as why. I'd like to know what got you excited in the comments below and I'm going to throw in a few bonus items at the end of the video so be sure to stick around for that. Let's jump right in and see what's in store. The first game that intrigued me and caught my attention was an indie game called Will Follow the Light. Now, Will Follow the Light is described as a realistic single-player first-person journey through the harsh northern latitudes as you sail endless waters searching for your way back to your loved ones. Now, the trailer pretty much showed exactly this. It's obviously a first-person single-player game. It looks like the majority of the time you are walking through exactly what they describe. Landscapes, whether that be by boat, dog sled, or on foot. Some of the gameplay loop is described as a line between reality and dreams. You'll wander through northern landscapes where light acts as your beacon of hope, guiding you through a labyrinth of endless quests and haunting memories. Now, at first glance, the game looks really good. Again, this is made by an independent studio. Their website describes their development team as spread out across the globe. So there is no central location that this studio is housed, but it is Tomorrow Head Studio. Visually, the game looks nice. It looks intriguing. I'm interested to see what this game is about. It seems rather linear, where traversing through the climate and taking in the visual aspect of the game through very means plays a large role. The light being a beacon that guides you uh, sounds a little bit similar to the Alan Wake series. I don't know if there will actually be enemies or challenges in the game that you have to overcome other than uh, perhaps puzzles or landscapes that have ended up not working out the way that you thought they would in an effort to get back to where you're going. The trailer does at the end leave it on a bit of a cliffhanger. It's a little open-ended. Uh, it does sound like there is some some sort of uh, underlying mystery here to be solved. It does describe itself uh, as a, a game where you're making your way back to your loved ones. It does sound a little bit more uh, ominous, if you will, mysterious than that. So I'm not sure what the story is actually going to be. There isn't too, too much that's been revealed about it yet, but Will Follow the Light is scheduled to release in 2025 under Tomorrowhead Studio. It does look pretty neat. Uh, I'd like to check that out depending on what further information we get. And moving right along, the second game that I am definitely excited for that I have seen footage on and tried to keep up with for a little while now is Ark Raiders. Now, Ark Raiders is described as a third-person PvPVE action survival shooter set in the lethal future Earth, ravaged by a mysterious mechanized threat known as the Ark. Ark Raiders is being developed and published by Embark Studios, which should be familiar to the fans of The Finals, which was a first-person sort of Battlefield-esque objective-based shooter that released the last couple years. A lot of fun, had a lot of, uh, a lot of fun with that game. Great game, really cool mechanics. You could tell there was a lot of, you know, Battlefield-esque influence into that. So this game is being developed by that team, published under Embark Studios. There is not an official release date yet for the game, however, you can request playtest access through the website if you'd like to try to get an invite to test the game early. It is going to have extraction elements. I'm not sure if at its core it's purely going to be an extraction shooter, uh, but it certainly is going to have extraction shooter elements as well as traditional team-based elements fighting other enemies that are player controlled as well as AI. 
The game is going to feature its own economy of some type, a colony if you will, where you will try to sell and trade the supplies that you come back with. It's unclear how deep this is at this time. If you're going to be building up some sort of hideout or some sort of infrastructure, I would imagine that you would. Again, the game is also going to be a third person game, which we don't see a lot of these days. So it'll be interesting to see more on this game and how this game pans out. I have no doubt that the developers of the finals will produce something of quality with this game. They did an awesome job with that game and I'm anxious to see where this game goes. All right, moving right along. The third game on the list, another highly anticipated game, a game that I haven't played, which I'm going to get a lot of flack for, I'm sure, is the Stalker series, specifically Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. Now, technically, this is the fourth iteration in the Stalker series, but this game is described as the exclusion zone has changed dramatically after a second massive explosion in 2006. Violent mutants, deadly anomalies, warring factions have made the zone a very tough place to survive so it seems like they're sticking to it as far as the post-apocalyptic uh post nuclear fallout role that you are playing and existing in the world that you are existing in uh it's an open world game so i would imagine that there are a myriad of main quests and side quests to complete uh this game is made by a ukrainian developer if you didn't know that already uh gsc game world it is also also scheduled to release November 20th of this year so that means we should be able to get our hands on it relatively soon I've always kept up with the stalker games watch their gameplay they've always looked really really cool and they've received a ton of praise for their quality so I have no doubt that the game is gonna be a really cool game to play uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about the stalker series uh, what I should know about it what I should anticipate about it uh, I've never played them I've kept up with them but I've never played them they've always looked really intriguing to me though so I am looking forward to playing this one I know I'm probably missing out on key plot points uh, or parts of the story from previous games uh, do the games have multiple endings or is it just one ending every time uh, let me know what I need to know in the comments below about this game stalker 2 heart of Chernobyl again set to release in November of this year looking forward to that one it looks great can't wait to see more from that game all right ladies and gentlemen the fourth game on the list and don't you go anywhere we do have two bonus mentions coming up right after this developed by a polish company that goes by the astronauts they are based in warsaw and they were formed in the year 2012 the game is Witchfire. now this is a game that i have actually uh, never seen or heard of until now uh, it's described as a first person dark fantasy rpg shooter uh, as a where a wicked sinner turned hunter uh, on his final mission to salvation so I guess he is hunting to try to redeem himself uh, he's hunting the very thing that he is or was now it went into early access I guess in 2023 I don't think you can still get early access to the game anymore I would imagine not since the release date is 2024 uh, so I would say that that's no longer a go but anytime I hear fantasy or a blend of fantasy in the game it doesn't really intrigue or excite me I've never been a big fantasy guy but when I saw the the gameplay for this it actually looked pretty cool I liked the way they were blending the magic the fantasy elements of the game with sort of the modern uh, doom esque uh, type of guns and gunplay it looked like a really neat combination something that wasn't outside of yourself uh, something that was you know probably a little bit fast-paced it looks like you can choose from different characters to play like different uh, witches or hunters uh, whatever you will they probably have different abilities perks you can upgrade different ways to play the game. I also noticed something that was pretty cool where it states that the game is not going to have any cutscenes. Now, I don't know if that's true at all. I don't know how that works. I don't know if I've ever played a game quite like this. If you have, you can let me know below how that works. Uh, if the game has no cutscenes, I'm not sure how prominent the story arc will be in the game in real time. I don't know how they would explain or describe that without cutscenes. But if you're simply just playing from beginning to end without a single cutscene. I mean, at the very least, there's got to be like some sort of loading or save screen, right? Not 100% sure how the story is going to come into play uh, if that's the case. But Hellblade 2 did a terrific job of making the world and the voice acting uh, the story sort of being laid out in front of you as you progress.
progress through the levels without very many cutscenes. So I could see how it could be done. Uh, it's just an interesting caveat that I noticed that I'm not used to seeing. So Witch Fire, again, being developed by a Polish developer by the name of The Astronauts. Looking forward to that one. Different than what I would normally play. If you have more information on this, if you were lucky enough to get early access to the game, uh, please let me know down below what I need to know about Witch Fire. All right, guys and gals, thank you for still being here. Bonus game number one is Dying Light the Beast. Now, this game wasn't featured in my main four uh, simply because I don't really know much about the game. I've never played a Dying Light game. And to be honest with you, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this too. I'm not the biggest fan of zombie games. It's such a done and done and done again genre that the games are just a dime a dozen. I think the last game, and this is going to age me a little bit, that I played that was a zombie game that I played with friends that I had a great time playing was Dying, uh, excuse me, not Dying Light 2, Left 4 Dead 2. Now I know there have been many, many, many other zombie based games that have released since that franchise and, and a lot of them have probably probably been really good. Uh, but it's just something that I don't get into a lot because it's it's very it's a very repetitive you know gameplay loop. Uh, I'm not I'm just not sure how I feel about it. So please educate me. Let me know what is the Dying Light series like. Uh, Dying Light: The Beast is described as a standalone zombie adventure game, so I don't suppose it ties in uh, to the original Dying Light at all. Uh, I'm not 100% sure there. Uh, but you play as the protagonist Kyle Crane. He's a hero who breaks free after years. of of brutal experiments. Now he must realize there's more at stake than just revenge. Okay, so a typical coming of age hero story here developed by Techland, which is another Polish game developer. The game uh, does not appear to have a scheduled release date yet. It just states that it's coming soon. I would imagine that it will be releasing in late 2024 or sometime in 2025. So please let me know what are your thoughts on Dying Light as a series? Are you excited for Dying Light 2? Is it a game that I should look into? I don't know much about the games. I'm not the biggest zombie guy. Uh, they just don't intrigue or grab me uh, quite as much these days. But please let me know what you think about this game and if you feel like it's worth investing into. All right, and last but not least, the final bonus game. And the reason that this game is a bonus item is because there was limited footage on it. There was a showcase trailer, but not a whole lot to go off of. That is is Mafia, the old country. Now, I have not played a Mafia game in quite some time. It was probably the PS3, I guess, was the last time I played Mafia. A uh, fun game, though. I'm a sucker for anything Mafia-related, mob-related. I love it. I love shows about the Mafia. I, I can't get enough of it. I don't know why. It's a, it's a horribly dangerous, corrupt way to live your life, but I just cannot get enough of the lore that is the mob and the Mafia and these crime fans. Families. I love it. Uh, a lot of people I know were excited about this mafia iteration because it's actually being set uh, in the early 1900s Sicily in Italy. Uh, so you don't have one that's, you know, in the United States, New York, Chicago, uh, wherever it, they may have taken place before, but you're actually going back to the old world. Uh, they're calling it the brutal underworld of the 1900s Sicily. Now the game is planned to release in the year 2025. Uh, there's not a whole lot of information on that. It's being published under 2K uh, by the developer Hangler, Hangar 13, excuse me. Uh, the story is described as discovering the origins of the crime family in Mafia, the old country. It's set in the brutal underworld of the 1900 Sicily, like we said, fight to survive in this dangerous and unforgiving era. And there really isn't a whole lot of other information on it but that. If you're familiar with the Mafia series, then you're familiar with how this game will more than likely play out, the gameplay mechanics, the loop of the game. I'm intrigued to see what the story is like. I think a new generation of Mafia in the actual underground of Sicily early 1900s would be pretty compelling and uh, as someone who who just is a diehard Mafia mob fan I am I am very much looking forward to seeing how this plays out and what information we get on this game. Again it was only included as a bonus game because there really just hasn't been a whole lot revealed about it at least that I can see or that I can find. Uh, so if you have any more information about it or you have 
have opinions on the Mafia series, what you think the Mafia, uh, the old country will look like, what it'll be like, please let me know in the comments down below. Alrighty, folks, we made it to the end. This was your Gamescom 2024 recap here on the Scrim Gaming channel, baby. Now, this list was not comprehensive by any means. Gamescom is the largest gaming event in the world. There were over 300,000 people in attendance this year with over 1,400 vendors. So there was a ton of content on Showcase. There's a ton of panels talking to a lot of these guys and gals about the industry and games. Let me know what you're excited about. Did you see anything from Gamescom 2024 that got you excited, that got your heart racing, that made you say, hell yeah, I cannot wait to get my hands on that game. If there is something that I mentioned in this video that you'd like to educate me on a little bit further, please do. Let me know. Let me know what I should be uh, looking forward to, some more information about the games that I listed that I should know about. And as always, folks, I really do appreciate you being here. Throw a like on the video if you enjoyed it. It helps a ton letting YouTube know that this content should reach more people. It's totally free. If you feel compelled enough to subscribe, even better. That comes with a lot of perks, too. You're a member of the Scrim Daddy Squad, Scrim Daddy Gang. Whatever we're calling it, we're figuring that out. But you're a member of the community, man, and that's what it's all about here. You know, we're growing. The channel's growing. The numbers are looking good. But we're, we're trying to build a community. You know, we're trying to have conversations about this kind of stuff. So it comes with a lot of perks, you know, mainly being around cool people who want to talk about the same type of stuff. So we stream here on YouTube as well as Twitch three days a week. Drop a follow over there if you uh, prefer Twitch as your main platform. There are links in the video as well as the description of YouTube. Uh, I really do appreciate all of you, all of the support, the subs, the comments, the likes coming through the streams, dropping a line. It means the world. You have no idea how much it does mean. So thank you guys very much for sticking around. Let me know your opinions about the games mentioned in this video or anything that I may have missed, and I'll see you guys online.